Welcome back to It's All About Help. Doug Miles uh, sitting in for Rochelle Herman tonight. Our guest is Gary Schuster. And as you heard in the first half of the program, uh, his, some of his experiences working for the Detroit News. Let's move on to uh, some of your television and radio work. You moved on to CBS, uh, what, mid-1980s, right? Mid-1980s. You have went to work for, uh, for them at the White House. And uh, now, they knew that you were covering the Washington beat for the newspapers that oh, sure, came to you? Sure, yeah, well, yeah, it, it sort of developed out of the fact that, you know, all these networks liked uh, people who got on camera. They wanted their own people on camera. And because of my sort of close coverage with Reagan in 1980, because the convention, as I said earlier, was in Detroit, I got to know him really well and traveled with him sometimes, just he and I on an airplane when he was, before he announced in 1980. And, um, Played a little trick on Reagan on the last day of the campaign in 1980, flying in from San Diego up into Burbank. And he was walking through the plane with Nancy, shaking everybody's hand and thanking him for the coverage. And some of us had been with him for, I don't know, 17, 18 months, basically. I mean, as a family, you know, Secret Service agent, everybody sort of knew one another. And so he was walking down the aisle shaking hands with people. And he had told me a long time ago that he wasn't a real good politician because he had no real handle on people's names. He wasn't good at remembering names. And he said the trick he used was, he'd say, uh, what's your name? And you'd say, Doug. And he'd say, oh, I know Doug, but what's the last name? Or you'd say, Miles. He'd say, oh, I know Miles, but what's the first name? Yeah. And that's how he got himself around that little conundrum that he, that he found himself in periodically. So I knew he had this problem. We all had our dog tags on, you know, the press credentials sure. we had to wear. And I took mine in my pocket. <laughs> so I saw him coming, and he got to me, and he says, well, oh, uh, looking for the tag and he couldn't see it couldn't you know I'm head in my pocket and I said you don't remember my name do you governor <laughs> I said after 17 months you don't remember my name he says well I have to admit he said you know I, and then he told me the story about this back and forth with the names so I pulled the tag out and we sort of laughed about it and he went on his way so he gets elected the next day the vote comes in he gets elected day goes by has the first press conference as president in the uh, Century Plaza out in LA where his offices were upstairs, the election on their political offices. So the room's filled with probably, I don't know, three, four hundred reporters from around the world, Japanese cameramen, Australia, you name it, everybody's there. Format was you have to call on two wire services to start the press conference, just like the president does now in the White House, mm -hmm. in the East Room. Call on AP, then UPI, switch them the next one. Always Helen Thomas. It was always Helen, Helen. not anymore, but you know, it was then, right. So, press conference starts. He calls on Helen. She was there. And he calls on Terry Hunt from Associated Press, I guess it was. And then he called on the networks. Called on Donaldson. Called on Leslie Stahl, who was my colleague at CBS. And she was in the front row wearing red, so she'd be seen like all the Nancy lookalikes <laughs> wanted to be. Then he called on Andrea Mitchell. So all that was out of the way. All the formalities out of the way. And here's this room with hands going crazy, people jumping up and down. Now I'm about halfway out behind some people, and he says, Gary. <laughs> and I knew that that little trick on that airplane stuck in his mind. Uh. And from then on, every press conference at the White House, and he had a lot of them early on, he called on me. Where No matter where I was in the room, he called on me. CBS noticed that. They liked the idea that, you know, they could get it. So First name basis with the president. First name basis with the president. They would always get their prime reporter, Leslie or whoever it was, called on because of the format. But then they got another one because I was there. They'd get another one. So they wanted, you know, they wanted that done, and so they came to me and said, would you come to work for us? They wanted me to go to the Pentagon, and I said, eh, I don't want to work in the Pentagon. So we agreed on the White House. And, um, and I did it, you know, radio and TV there for uh, a couple of years. What kind of guy was he? I've heard stories that he's was a very relaxed kind of guy, went like on the plane, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty down to earth. Yeah, very down to earth. Yeah, very old, uh, sort of old shoe, uh, cowboy-like, you know. Really, so, I mean, he was a guy, I would say, who was very comfortable in his own skin. He had done so much. He'd had so much notoriety. Um, the, the, the bright lights never bothered him. Uh, all the attention. He was he was just very good about it. He was himself, and he you know he had a very small agenda uh, at the White House. You know, it was lower taxes, get rid of the Soviets, and uh, federalize. You know, give more programs back to the states. It's about all he was really interested in getting done, and he did. He got them done, and so he didn't have a big agenda. 
He was easy, you know, easy on himself. Uh, didn't overwork. You know, sort of joked about falling asleep at uh, meetings. And uh, it was a nine to five. No, yeah, basically, it was a nine to five. Right. Yeah. He liked going up to the up to the quarters, the private quarters, having some macaroni and cheese, which is his favorite dish. You know. <laughs> And a few jelly beans, and that was it. I mean, he was a pretty simple guy All when you look at all the other ones who've been in and out of that office. What was it like traveling on Air Force One? Cramped. What was it? Cramped. <laughs> yeah. For a guy my size, our size, right, right. Uh, yeah, cramped. Uh, you the, the, in coach? Is that what happened? Well, the, the way the plane was configured, it seated about, uh, I don't know, 45 people. So was, yeah, the president had, I mean, it, because you got Air Force, you got all the Air Force security on there, that uh, all their the uh, radio stuff that they have to have for sort of world, you know, watch mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And so they had that set up, which is the big console about halfway back in the plane. They had the president's uh, area, which had a bed and some couches and tables and a workplace. And so that took up a big spot. You had a few staff seats regular sort of first-class seats. You had Secret Service that you had to have it, eight of them because when they got off the plane, there had to be eight of them. And then you had in the back, then you had the Air Force crew that had to take care of the plane, and there was a lot of them. And then in the back of the plane, this was the 707 at the time. It was the lab before they went to Jumbo. Right. The Jumbo's the 747. This was the, the 707 that brought Jack Kennedy's body back from Dallas. That day, that they brought Kennedy's body back on that plane. The plane was reconfigured from the way Reagan had it. Kennedy was in the back. All of that stuff that you see in those clips where, where Jackie's standing next to LBJ and he's mm -hmm. taking the oath for the judge before they took off, that was in the back of the plane where we sat as the press corps after they reconfigured it. And uh, it was tight. Little seats, mm -hmm. room for, I think, uh, 10 or 11 of us. It was basically a press pool. It was a, you know, somebody represented the wire services, both. So Helen always flew Air Force One. And um, the networks got three uh, seats for their correspondents, and then another three seats for the cameramen. And then there was a reporter who represented all the newspapers, and another reporter represented all the magazines. And that was the press pool that always traveled with the press. Everywhere he went. On Air pool. Force One. Right. And it rotated. You know, it rotated alphabetically for the papers and the magazines. The networks always had their seats. They might have rotated reporters or correspondents, but they always, yeah. uh, you know, did it. So it was cramped. You know, the food was Air Force food. Right. Uh, we had Russian dressing on our salad going over to Geneva to meet with Gorbachev, which was, I thought was a cute little twist. But, uh, but by and large, it was, uh, you know, the other thing that was good is you always got there last. Right. Because the, right. the press plane, which was loaded with people, had to get there first so all the cameras could set up. So you'd be... A, you know, circling around and then come in at the end. So it was always... Uh, you always took off when you wanted to. But always left That's right. first. That's right. Gary, unfortunately, we're out of time. Oh, uh, too bad. We'll invite you back. being with you. And we'll Thank talk you. to you on Friday's show on 1220. Thank you. I think we'll talk about health, maybe. We'll do that. You know? yeah. Thank you. Gary Schuster has been my guest today. I'm Doug Miles. Thanks again to Rochelle Verhoeven for letting me sit in. This has been It's All About Health. We'll see you on the radio tomorrow at 10 o'clock on 1220. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you again soon.